When built and played right, Wanderer is a very strong and competent DPS, but he has a skill ceiling in order to get the most out of him. So, here are some tips to help you bring out his full potential. The first tip is, do not underestimate the importance of attack speed on Wanderer. As a ranged DPS, Wanderer has no hit lag, so he gets the full value out of attack speed. This causes attack speed to essentially be another multiplier for his damage. For example, going from 0% to 10% attack speed on him is just about a 10% damage increase, whereas it would be less than half of that on a character with hit lag. But, attack speed is not just important for the damage itself. It's also important because the faster you attack, the faster you get his AFAR up, and Wanderer's AFAR allows him to dodge while actually gaining DPS rather than losing it. This is something that no other DPS unit is currently capable of, and for Wanderer in particular, it's extremely important that he has this, as he has a ranged DPS unit, meaning he has very little poise, and you lose a lot of Sky Driller points if you try to dodge without a far up. So having more attack speed on Wanderer is extremely important, both for improving his damage, and making it much more consistent and reliable to dodge. This makes things such as Tule Tula, his C1, DPC, as well as things like Yunjin C6 and Jin C4, a lot more valuable than they may appear at a first glance, especially if you play without a shield. And the second tip is, do not forget that Wanderer's burst snapshots, meaning that about a second or so into his burst animation, it will utilize the stats Wanderer has at that moment, even if some of the buffs expired by the time the damage is dealt. This is important to know when you are using Bennett alongside a flex slot that you want to use after Bennett in the rotation, for example, if you're using Yunjin and use her right after Bennett so that she procs Crystallize, or are using Venti and use him after Bennett so that he snapshots and maximizes his own damage. Since Wanderer's burst does snapshot, Wanderer would still get Bennett's buff on all his damage if you use his burst at the end of his skill rather than before. And following up on the previous tip, since Wanderer's burst snapshots, you can use Farah's on after Bennett and right before Wanderer. This is very useful for situations where you are going to need a partial second rotation to finish off the enemies. And this is because Farazan's buff lasts 22 seconds, which is longer than Wanderer's entire rotation. So if you use Farazan right before Wanderer, then you'll still have a few seconds of Farazan's buff remaining by the time you enter Wanderer's skill again the following rotation, without actually needing to cast her burst again. And this can allow you to save Farazan's energy for the next chamber, so that she isn't starting the next chamber with little to no energy. Furthermore, if you are using Farina, this allows Farazan to get healed by Bennett for fanfare since she was cast within his burst. And for tip number 4, remember that Wanderer's skill can self-swirl, so if Wanderer has an aura on him, his skill will not only swirl the aura on the enemy, but also the aura on Wanderer himself. This is primarily how he is able to swirl two elements, you get two of his A1 buffs at the same time instead of just one. This is especially important to know because Bennett's burst applies self pyro. So if using Bennett, you do not actually need there to be a pyro aura on the enemy to get the 30% attack buff, since the aura will already be on Wanderer. You will just want to make sure you wait like half a second or so after swapping to Wanderer before you cast this skill, because it takes a brief moment for the self pyro to be applied. If you use your skill too soon, you will not self swirl pyro. So if you're using DPC, you'll usually want to do the charged attack before Wanderer's skill, since that will cover the time needed for the aura to apply. But if you're using another set other than DPC, do like one or two normal attacks before you're using your skill. And then next tip, remember that getting staggered on or interrupted on Wanderer is not actually the end of the world. If you get staggered, you will note just as like an aerial recovery icon for your dash and or jump button, Press this as soon as possible after getting staggered, and Wanderer will quickly recover, and this does not consume any Sky Driller points to perform. And next tip, do not underestimate Farazan's grouping. So, Wanderer has pretty good AoE, but there are scenarios where you will want to ensure you manually group enemies. Depending on how important the need for grouping is in the specific content, you may want to bring Venti, but don't forget, Farazan herself is a grouper, and she's actually pretty good at it. Her pressurized collapse is one of the only forms of grouping that does not have a weight limit. So pretty much just like Venti, unless an enemy weighs 300 or more, or is coded to be immune to grouping, Farazan can group them. 
After casting Faris on skill, she can fire off two pressurized collapse charged attacks very fast for two instances of fast and efficient grouping. This, alongside the semi-continuous grouping she provides at C6, will be enough for most AoE content. And speaking of grouping, the next tip is make sure that you don't underestimate Venti. While Farsan's grouping is enough for most AoE scenarios, sometimes there are AoE scenarios with enemies that are either too spaced out for Farsan's pull radius, or the enemies are highly mobile and will just quickly ungroup. For these scenarios, Venti is invaluable to have in your arsenal. Like Farazan, he has no weight limit on his grouping, but his pull radius is more than twice the size of Horus, while having higher pulling strength. On top of this, enemies inside his bars get constantly staggered, preventing them from moving around or attacking, thus allowing you to not need to worry about getting interrupted. Heavier enemies will need to have their poise broken before Venti can stunlock them, and Wanderer's charged attack just so happens to deal massive poise damage, making this extremely easy. In addition to Venti's grouping, he deals fairly good AoE sub-DPS damage, thanks to Farazan and Bennett, It also refunds 15 energy to Bennett, so he still provides value even if every single chamber isn't suited to his grouping. You certainly don't always need Venti, but he's a unit that every Wanderer main should consider eventually adding to their arsenal. And for the following tip, against certain enemies with large hitboxes, Wanderer can fly into their hitbox to increase his flying height without consuming extra sky trailer points. This is a very convenient way to avoid getting interrupted, since most enemies will not be able to hit him with most, if any, of their attacks at this height. Some enemies that this works against are Large Geova Ship, the Pyro Crab, Large Rift Towns, and the Hydro Tulpa. There are more enemies that this works against, but you'll need to do some experimenting to know when and when not to do this. And farther following up on increasing Wanderer's height, do not underestimate his Hydro A1. You can increase Wanderer's flying height without needing to climb up enemies, but it consumes roughly 20 Sky Driller points, which can significantly reduce his field time. But Wanderer's Hydro A1 gives him an extra 20. You can use these extra Sky Driller points to increase your flying height while keeping the amount of field time you would have normally. Or instead of using the extra 20 Sky Driller points to fly higher, you can use it to dash for a dodge one time without your A4 up. And of course, if you don't need to use the extra 20 points to evade attacks, you can use them to extend your damage window by an extra 2 seconds, which can be the difference maker between finishing off the enemies in your current rotation or not. And for the next tip, for the 4th slot of Wanderer's team, it's very flexible, so you do not want to stick to just one team composition for all content. Instead, take advantage of his flexibility by flexing out your fourth slot to different units depending on what is best for the specific content at the time. For example, if you need to break elemental shields, you'll want to bring a unit of the element best for those shields. Or if facing spaced out group well AoE content, Venti will more than likely be the best performing option even if he is theoretically lower damage. Or if facing Nemo resistant enemies, a C4 chain will be heavily desired. Or if there's a powerful Abyss Blessing that needs a specific element, you can use your fourth slot to take advantage of that. So don't lock yourself into the mindset that there is one specific full team you should be using at all times. Wanderer's flexibility is one of his strengths. Utilize it. And next tip, if you're looking to vertically invest into your Wanderer, it's important to know how to prioritize your investment. The number one priority is always, always getting your Faris onto C6 as soon as possible. She's usable at C2, but getting her to C6 is the biggest power spike you're ever going to have. Since Farazan is always on Wanderer's banner, chances are you're going to get Wanderer to C1 or C2 with those same Primo gems. Wanderer C1 and C2 are strong early constellations, so this is excellent value for your Primo gems. If you don't get his constellations while getting Farazans, it is still a good investment to keep going for C1 to C2, and to keep in mind with C2 though, it's not quite as important as you may have heard. It is a massive improvement in a lot of scenarios, there, but there are scenarios where the extra damage from it is overkill and you would have gotten the same result without it, or would have preferred to front load the damage by using the burst before your skill. So if you get to C1, continuing for C2 is great, but don't feel like you have to get it. C1 is a perfectly good stopping point. 
And once you have your fireworks on at C6 and have Wando at either C1 or C2, whichever you decided to stop at, you can choose whether or not you want to invest in his weapon. Tule Tula is a great investment to make for your Wanderer, but if you have good alternative weapons like Wood Sith, Cash Flow, or Lost Priors, don't feel forced to get Tule Tulas on a bad weapon banner. Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Instead, you'll get likely get better value waiting for it to appear on a good weapon banner in the future, or even on a Chronicled Rish banner if it ever appears there. So once you have C6 Farazan and C1 or C2 Wanderer, and decided if you are getting his weapon or waiting for a better time to get it, you can now choose to go for either more Wanderer constellations, or go for more units to use with him in different scenarios, or even more constellations on those units. Unless you plan to go all the way to C6 on Wanderer, it's not really advisable to go beyond C2 at most. If you are going to go all the way to C6, then picking up a few constellations every, every Wanderer rerun when you can is a good idea, but if you're not going to do that instead, it's better to plan to use those Primo Gems to pick up valuable units for Wanderer. And some of those units you'll want to consider picking up are Farina as a general go-to option that also makes Bennett no longer mandatory, C6 Yunjin as another general go-to option, albeit more single target focused, Venti for those prior mentioned groupable AoE scenarios. It's not advised to go beyond C0 on Venti though, as the power level of his constellations is extremely low relative to the Primo Gem cost for them. C6 Layla, Toma, and Arzhongli are great when you want to play with a shield, as well as when you may need extra Pyro, Cryo, or Geo application. You don't need all three of them, just one shielder is enough. C4 Jean is another excellent go-to option, both with Bennett and with Farina. She's also extremely helpful with all the Anemo-resisted enemies that are often in the Abyss, as well as Sunfire being a great way to break elemental shields. But keep in mind that unless you've got a few copies of Jean, getting her to C4 is going to be a pretty hefty investment. And lastly, potential future supports. Wanderer's flexibility makes it quite likely for new supports in the future to be a great addition to your arsenal as a Wanderer main, so it's always worth keeping in that in mind when deciding how you spend your Primo Gems for Wanderer. And going back to Farina, if you pick up a C0 Farina for Wanderer, it's important to keep in mind that while she is the highest damaging option on paper, her buff is backloaded and she takes a bit of build time as well. One of Wanderer's biggest strengths is his short rotation time and fast setups, so sometimes other units will be similar if not better than Farina in practice, despite having lower output on paper. If you pick up Farina's C1 to C2, this is mostly no longer an issue since her buff is way larger and more front-loaded at that point. So if you are going to pull Farina specifically for Wanderer, I would suggest aiming for at least C1 if you can afford it, but don't think that you need Farina for Wanderer, you don't. And lastly, while it is the number one priority to get Farwiz onto C6, it is possible that you'll spend some time without her at C6. She is still usable if you build enough energy recharge, but there are some teams that you can use without her. These certainly won't be the greatest teams in the world, but they'll get the job done for 36 starring the Abyss until you do get her to C6. So some of the teams I recommend in this scenario are Double Hydra with Wanderer, Farina, Yelan, or Zinc Show and Mika, Bennett, or C4 Jean as the healer. This will be the strongest option because Wanderer still gets a decent amount of buffs, while also having the Hydro units doing good damage alongside him. Or Double Cryo with Farina, Mika, Layla. This is a freeze team, so you'll have 40 free crit rate alongside Farina's buffing. Make sure you use the DPC set and not Meira Shusei Hunter if using this team so you don't overcap on crit rate. Or Double Geo with the Zhongli, Yunjin, or Chiari and Bennett or Mika as the healer. Since you're not bursting every rotation without Farazan, Mika's buffing actually ends up being roughly equivalent to Bennett, and Chiori's personal damage, if she's built well, is basically equivalent to C6 Yunjin's buffing, buffing here, so they'll both work. And that's just about all the tips I have for you. Hopefully you found these tips helpful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a comment letting me know your thoughts. Thanks. Goodbye. Let the darkness take control.